Welcome to the sixth C in the program, Sail the Seven Seas to Sensational Storytelling. So far you've learned about the circumstances, characters, conflict, climax, and change to your story. The question I get from so many of my clients is, well, how do you effectively conclude your story, Mike, and uh, move into the rest of your speech, or if it's just a straight story, how do you end it and get people to take action? An important distinction to make here is if your story is part of a speech, you don't really conclude as much as you transition into the rest of the speech. I'm going to assume for purposes of this series that you're actually closing out your story and your presentation. There are three keys to remember when concluding your story. Number one is you should have your carry out message. That's a short phrase that's memorable that people will take away so they remember your story long after you speak. The great speaker Patricia Fripp says, last words linger. If your ending is weak, people aren't going to remember your messages strongly. They'll remember the story, but they may not quite remember the point. So develop a strong closing. Second, don't introduce any new ideas or information at the conclusion. I see so many speakers do this and they lose the power of their story and their carry out message. The best example I can give you is one of my audience's favorites is imagine that back in 1963, August 28, 1963, Dr. Martin Luther King standing in front of the Lincoln Memorial Everybody knows how he concluded his speech. What if instead of that memorable ending, he had instead done this? Free at last! Free at last! Thank God Almighty we are free at last! And another thing, we gotta do something about our education system in this country. It's a mess! What would the re reaction of the audience have been? Where did that come from, Dr. Ken? You were going fine, and then you threw in this thing about education? The power of that memorable ending would have long been forgotten because he would have muddied the waters. I see people do this all the time. So make sure that your concluding statement relates back to the story you've told and your main message. The third key is to have one specific call to action. If you want people to do something at the end of your speech, make sure it's one item. I've seen far too many presenters do this. Uh, I've seen this in the financial world, for example. I'll see speakers who ask people to sign up for a newsletter, uh, come to our next workshop, and by the way, sign up for an appointment, we'd like to come see you. Well, remember this phrase, the confused mind does nothing. If you give people three choices, they're not going to do any. Pick one. Live with that and then build people uh, in future meetings or future speeches to take additional actions. Looking at my Judy story, some people have honestly been a little bit confused about my conclusion because they've just seen that story, that clip, and they've not seen the whole speech. A little setup for you as far as my NSA presentation. What I was trying to do in that story was use it as an example of the seven C's but also persuade my fellow speakers, trainers, and coaches that what they do is important. Not that they don't know that, but they're like everybody else. They have rough days. They, a lot of them are solo practitioners, and sometimes they just need to be boosted. So my message to them wasn't about life insurance. It was more about how do you keep your head up in those difficult times. And I paralleled that with my uh, former life of being an insurance salesperson. Now, truthfully, I think I need to work on that ending. It needs to be a little bit more of a memorable message. What I wanted them to walk away with was keep doing what you're doing because it's important. People need to hear your message. Uh, that's really what I said. I think it, it, it could be a better ending. I'm okay with it for now. I'm like anyone else. My stories are constantly evolving. I can always make them better. In fact, if you've got an idea, send it to me. I'm always happy to get feedback on my presentations. But as it stands now, I think it's a good example for how to conclude to tie it back to your main point. 
So those are your three keys to concluding your story. Uh, make sure that it has a carry-out message. And one thing I didn't tell you was that carry-out message should always be 10 or fewer words. Anything longer than that, people are just not going to remember. If you can get it down to three or four, that's even better. So leave with a carry-out message. Don't introduce any new ideas in just one call to action. And that will sum up your story, give people something to remember and to act on. Speaking of taking action, it's now your turn. Determine what your carry-out message is, what you want people to do, and make sure that you're not giving too much at the end or you're confusing your main message. Get your feedback, test it, and keep working on that conclusion until it's memorable and people stand up and do whatever you tell them to do. In our next video, our seventh and final C, you'll learn about the heart of storytelling. Until then, always remember, you have a story that someone needs to hear.